that being said, new comic book day tomorrow. What are you guys Amen. picking up? It's it's not as heavy a week for me this week. I mean, Clay, what are you picking up tomorrow? Um, it, it it's it's amazing the week. Uh, the last week was, or was it the week before? There was a couple weeks ago where we just had everything was great. But um, for me, what am I picking up? What do I like? Uh, there's a couple things I like. I like this detective. Look at this. I like this detective. I like all the covers in this for some reason. I like that cover. It's cool. Uh, yeah. And then I like this cover right here. This is Lee Bermejo. Who doesn't like Lee, Lee Bermejo? I think that's a great cover. Um, and hopefully with the heat of... Uh, you know, it is the finale to a, a, a storyline, but hopefully with the heat of the, you know, movie, we start to see some more Batman sales and other stuff like that. But I definitely like this Department of Truth issue right here. I love that cover. I'm a huge space fan, history of space. And, you know, I used to work in, in that industry and just love everything about it, including the conspiracies. And this is an excellent cover for me. Um, so I like that a lot, but there's a new book that looks interesting. Uh, Frank and oh, that. that's a good yeah. one. Frank and Rocker and the Jailbait Punks number one. Uh, looks pretty interesting. Bad Kids Press. It says Frankenstein's Monsters forms a punk rock band with female teen musicians, and they go to outer space to fight an army of reptilians. It's like Galaxy Quest mashed up with the Sex Pistols by way of Saturday morning Saturday morning cartoons. So that's just kind of uh, out there, interesting stuff for me. You know what I mean? So, it's like see. that outlier you pick up and then could be good, but then sometimes just bleh. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens with that. It's, uh, it's very interesting. I do, I do like that Department of Truth, though. Here's the uh, cover B for it, which is also very interesting. Um, the whole uh, did we land on the moon thing is fascinating <laughs> to me. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, so I like space too much. Yeah, uh, working in the industry, one thing that I did is, um, so I worked in uh, space and defense for 15 years, and um, we used to have astronauts come to the plant all the time, uh, and you know they would just they would just hire them to hang out basically, and like you know, if we had big huge meetings, they would bring them up, but. Anytime that uh, the astronauts would be around, they would love to come down to the engineering lab, which is what I ran and. I would first thing I would ask him is every single time I thought when I was alone with him, I'd be like, so did you ever see anything weird out there? <laughs> and, and about half of them would mm -hmm. say, yeah, yeah. A lot while they were doing, um, uh, a lot of them were, um, test pilots. So, but anyway, so I love that stuff. So I'm looking forward to, uh, seeing, seeing this. Um, we'll see what happens. I love space ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm so pissed too. They stopped making just like the plain ice cream. And now you have to get it with the with the, like the like the sandwich style. Yeah, dipping dots, right? Yeah, it's like a it's like the freeze they dried. Like, yeah, freeze dried ice cream sandwiches. Yeah, you, know, you have to have it with a cookie or whatever. I, I like just that used to be yeah. the thing to get at Air and Space Museum at Smithsonian as a kid. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he well, gets stuff like that REI. I think now still. I lived like 15 minutes from NASA, so. Very cool, man. Very cool. Too bad it's not what it used to be. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Now we're, from when I was a kid and now it's wild. Yeah. I just went there actually. I took my kid there about a month ago. Nice. In years. It's pretty, well, it's pretty lame right now. <laughs> well, this is interesting. Yeah, Elbirdo. Ooh. Your book is back, baby. Yeah. Uh, Saga is definitely back. Definitely excited. This is a heartbreaking picture for those of you that have read Saga that have been following the series. This is a bit of a heartbreaker, kind of a cover. I don't want to spoil the story, but we're all excited for it to be back every month. Is that That's a really booger? Cool. Is that a booger on his hook? It's probably a giant booger. It's speaking of snot, I'm covered in it right now. But uh, yeah, so Saga is gonna be the first thing I read tomorrow. But there's actually two books that aren't being taught let me rephrase that two covers that aren't being talked about much in the community right now that uh i'm wondering what your guys's feelings are on these if you pull up darth vader 21 right there that sprouse variant should be if i remember correctly that should be the first cover appearance of moff gideon and not a lot of people are talking about this because he's not that cool of a character yeah yeah but i mean it, we talk about you talk about any first in star wars seem to catch some sort of hype lately it yeah. seems like 
he might not be the coolest character, but it just seems like there's a fan base for everything Star Wars right now. And I don't feel like this book was talked about much, and I just feel like the probably underprinted, a little underprinted, a little underappreciated. I, I buy everything Star Wars now just because that's where I'm at. It's like everything was all Thanos a couple years ago. Where is that shit now? Yeah. Well, hey. I mean, you're right. <laughs> Like Mandalorian, right, is coming out, so we know that Moff Gideon will appear officially, like have a first appearance. So this this book might, you know, be pretty valuable. That's the the dots I'm kind of connect, and it could it could not see a huge value either way. But yeah, <clears throat> Dang first Dark Saber it. cover. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, wasn't the Dark Saber on a mall book? I think no, it was on. It was on the. It was on that was one on? that Topher talks about too. Yeah, but then if you go back and scroll down a little bit to Doctor Afra, here's another book not a lot of people have talked about. Uh, Doctor Afra, what issue is out this week? Nineteen. Nineteen. If you scroll down one more, I think. Oh, I lost Wait, it. Nineteen. Yeah, Where where's Doctor Afra go? Why do they make this so tough? All every every week. There it is, right there in the middle. If you Ooh. click on that, the Sprouse variant from this, that's, that's not an a bad interesting cover. cover right there. It's not bad at all either, but the Sprouse variant for this is the first cover appearance of Bo Katan. Oh, really? I like that better than the Moff Gideon one by and far. And this this yeah. really jives with the Anakin Ahsoka um Sprouse variant from uh War of the Bounty Hunters 5, I think. It's got that nice purple background, and I'm wondering if they're kind of making a series of purple-esque backgrounds with some of these characters that you might see kind of some niche collectors getting into. Um, but those are covers that I don't... I've only seen one, maybe two people post about it on Instagram over the last month or so, and not a lot of people are talking about it right now, but they're out tomorrow, and uh, yeah. Not like to mention, Philippe, people like to collect sets of shit. Yeah. Those are the three that I'm. Uh, I have them on my pull list. Actually, They're, I've got the email, and uh, I'm really excited to get those in my hands tomorrow. Yeah, that's cool, man. Tony, Tony, Tony. Um, I, I, Andy has stole mine, so I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I don't know. Kind of a light week. I've been, I have been chasing some of those Sprouse variants. Um, he's done quite a few of them. But the like Andy was saying, the the few that have featured characters from other uh, from other shows, they've had some featuring the rebels, you know, the animated characters, the um, characters that have shown up in either uh, Mandalorian or Boba Fett. You know, we we saw one with uh, Mandalorian and the oh. Child. What last month, right? Stop Ooh. it, Brian. Um, <laughs> so those are interesting. You know, a couple series that have been out for a long time that I don't know. They're for some reason I'm kind of getting drawn into wanting to catch up with them again. It'd be Philadelphia, which is Ooh. I think on twenty. Yeah. There's, some, yeah. There's, there's always some really cool covers for that, um, but that has had some longevity. Ooh, uh, look at that. And there's an Eric Larson variant for that one too. Oh. Um, and then monstrous. I don't know something about monstrous. I was about to ask it. I'm like thirty-eight. I yeah, I haven't been reading monstrous in a while. Yeah, a lot of people haven't been. Um, and, it was, and it wasn't that it wasn't good. It was just it, had, it took a break for a while, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think both of those are kind of percolating. You know, obviously they've got a big following to be to be around. Uh, at this point, having a run of, you know, 20, 30 issues in today's market is saying something. Yeah. For sure. Damn, what do you got? Well, um, actually. I know, you get, we're, I know we, we're, we sit eye to eye, so I'm waiting. Well, uh, I'm going to say Ghost Cage issue one. Well, there it is. That it just for me. looks so good. And uh, this there was a chat tip about you can make this alphabetical. The list. Where is it? Go up, left, right there. Yeah, this looks good. Nick Dragota, man. Oh wow, that does yeah, the West. It looks great. Um, it's reminding me of like Joe Mad and Battle Chasers, mm -hmm. and it look, it's like it feels like a really fun mishmash of stuff. It, it's just iconic. It's like instantly iconic. 
Hopefully the story is good. It's um, like if it was Mark Millar, but good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, uh, also, we have demons. I'm looking forward to that one. I think Scott Snyder. Well, yeah. I think it's a good spec kind of too because he's getting he's getting all his properties made um yeah, i feel it, like it's a solid spec yeah because you got snyder capullo, capullo and then we yeah. always Glapium. have those but there's also a jock cover and oh, it's wow. an interesting premise um wow it looks it looks really good holy crap yeah i, I think snyder is a person <laughs> to spec in general um, I'm probably, he's like there's a the momoko Especially creator owned stuff i don't care Ooh. about the momoko i like yeah, the capullo terrible. cover Wait, is she supposed to be an amputee? I think so. Okay. <laughs> I like. The well, you gotta stuff. you gotta ask the Momoko art because some of the Momoko art is just maybe kind of not. Abstract. What's going on here? She's got her hands here. Is that a hand on the right there, or is that okay? Well, hold on, we gotta look and see what this is. With a newfound <laughs> partner, awesome powers at her disposal, our hero suddenly finds herself thrust in a climactic war of good and evil with no less than the it's like fate of the world. Why does she not have an hand on this? Had to move on to the next card. <laughs> Deadlines. Um, <laughs> Deadlines. I mean, Deadlines. Noctera, you know, it, 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 it had a lot more buzz, and I feel like this has less buzz, and if there's it's it's not as ordered as much, then it's better spec, right? Because hmm. I mean, there's so many yeah. copies of Noctera. Um, was... And then finally, Cassidy's Secret, issue three. No one's talking about this book. No, no one's read this book, but it's basically about a lawyer in a superhero world. And this is like their Superman is murdered and, and it's like all this conspiracy and stuff. But it's a lot. It's a courtroom drama, sort of. It reminds me of early Brian Michael Bendis. Um, I really like the previous issues. So I'm going to continue reading Cassidy's Secret. There's no cover. There's no cover. There's no cover. Okay. Yeah. Can we, can we go back to Ghost Cage real quick? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is an image number one dropping. And... Uh, are there no variants for this? No variants. That I really? Saw. Image that's, doesn't really that's... like to do variants anymore, man. Well, I feel like issues. every I feel like every week I go into the shop, it's it always Im Image is chock full of variants with all their number ones, at least with the number ones. Well, and I think, I think, I think they like, leave, leave it up to that, the creator, don't they? Yeah, Nick Dragota is like badass. Yeah. Where does it say I sort? I can the I can right, sort probably up in the top right. Right here. One more over. Uh, where'd uh, it go? Nope. Browse by format. Other refinements. Other Only sorting. number ones. Most people. Maybe right by this? Issue sorting. There we go. Where does it say issue sorting? Down towards the bottom. Jeez, we're terrible, you guys. I'm well, terrible. It's just me. I only have one book left because I had um, Ghost Cage and we have Demons. There you go. Mm. Thank you. But, you just made my life so much better. All right. Which one? Go back to that, the Electra Black, White, and Blood. Okay. The Greg Smallwood cover on that. Yes. Is freaking gorgeous. I think just, long term, those are good. Like, there are people picking up the Black, White, Blood covers. God, that is dope. So. That one, and then I had Ghost Cage. We Have Demons was also my pick of the week between Snyder, Capullo, and, and of course there's Jock in there, but uh, followed by Ghost Cage, and then this one for a cover. But, and there's a second hard cover for Sadarsky's Daredevil. Interesting. Volume 2, which I'm excited to see. Because that way, hopefully, we get closer to a Zdarsky Daredevil omnibus, which is what I'm looking forward to. And we got Batman coming up soon, right? Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> Ryan. See. Me? Where, where are you getting? Ryan. For me? I don't think there's anything coming out this week that I'm going to be getting. Cantankerous picked mm. for you. <laughs> yeah, I think he did. Cantankerous knows what's up. Yeah, LP. Need to protect. I'm really excited about that. I'm hoping that it's it's going to be a good story. I got some really cool covers. Uh, I'm trying to get there. Artists, huh? Oh, is it locked up again? It's locked up on me. Obviously. There we go. Um, but it's got like Paul Sakara. It's got uh, Sanc uh, 
Sankovich. Is how you say his last name? Sankovich. 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 Yeah, that guy. And um and uh Oop, there it was. Oh. And Mussolini's back on it. So and that's that's the Paul Secura one. Yeah, um, the Sankovich covers. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. And then uh got him right, McClay. Oh. Wow. That yeah, that's cool. interesting. I'm thinking that's probably the one in twenty five. I don't know which one the one in twenty five is. Uh, He's got another cover out tomorrow too. I forget for what book. Here's the Kirkham. Kirkham yeah, doesn't look too bad. Unknown comics thing, or whatever. Sure. That's that's not a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's a. It's a exclusive, exclusive somewhere. A retailer. Um, Nakayama. No, that, 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 that one. Sorry, that one's the no, one in twenty five. That one right there. The Nakayama. Nakayama one. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that too. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. I'm hoping that it's it, it, that it's a story, you know, and that it's going to be. You know, it's supposed to be, you know, back before everything happened and whatnot. Kind of same, same, taken from the same time frame as uh, the original Luther Protector with um, Michelin writing, and um, I'm hoping to make some like a like a good graphic box for this too as well. Because I wouldn't mind. I need some some more boxes, and I need. I would love to get a bit, get a couple boxes from this as well. So, but I'm stoked to see you know, I, because the current Venom run is, <laughs> and so I'm hoping that this will be like really like quench quench the the thirst for a good story. That's fine. Yeah, it looks interesting. There's a Perillo. I do like yeah, that. Oh, it's badass, man. I mean, that's cool. I like yeah. that. I like the chickens. Is it a chickens? Is awesome, man. <laughs> I didn't see it till just now. Awesome. So yeah, I'm stoked on that. There you I'll, have it. I don't know what that means. Some of the old. Uh, <laughs> you yeah, can't search the web for. Oh, the I didn't see about? it till just now. That's awesome. So yeah, I'm certain. Oh, what the hell? Was that? <laughs> <laughs> the friggin' uh, something else came out. I don't know what the hell that was. But uh, uh, I like to use all the uh, the older style of art and whatnot. Yeah. Things are made. Well, I, I think uh, it's interesting that they're going back to that time period to tell stories again. Why'd you just well, go through all the stuff that we did, you know? Well, I, you know, I think it's cool to get like the, you know, some of the, the classic guys that wrote the stories and because it's like back then, you know, it was the, the character was someone new and they were kind of messing around with it. So now you got all this, all this, this background that's been, um, that's been put in place for the, for the character. And now they can kind of write with that in mind. So that's pretty cool. Getting yeah. asked a question, Ryan. What's the first appearance of Venom? Uh, let me, I mean, the first, I mean, it's in a, it's in a magazine. Oh, there's a bunch of them, right? Yeah, there's the magazines. It's like Web of Spider Man 18 or something like that has his hand in it. They push in there. They put it, there's like they, someone's pushing. Um, well, that's like the Jessica Cruz shit there. Yeah. yeah and then uh, 23 of Web of Spider Man or something like that. He's in it for a second. Um, there's a shadow. Not to mention uh, issue two of previews 1984. Yeah, the previews thing. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff like that. Comics, comics. Is that uh, what? Is, is that comic what scene that, magazine? The double O is. Is that is? Yeah, Web of eighteen. 18. Yeah. <clears throat> what is what Michelin is? Yeah, because that's that's one where uh, there's a he gets pushed a, in front a, of the train. Yeah, yeah, train. And there, no, it's never been said whether it's Eddie Brock or not, but it's pretty much. But it's because it was written before for a female. She was supposed. Venom was supposed to be female. Yeah, originally. So that's why it looks like a female hand. I love stuff like that. It was written before, uh, you know, the 300 and all that jazz happened. So um, it's interesting. Yeah, because it, it, yeah. I wish they would kind of put a, 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 a pen, a, a captain uh, that and tell us exactly what that is supposed to be. But it's still, um, uh, I guess, these are to the reader's imagination. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've always wondered that. When we talk about Venom, why do we talk about McFarlane and not Michelini? Right? No. Because everyone claims that uh, McFarlane is a creator, and that's not the case. And he was part of the – he helped design the character. But Michelini was like, yeah. And, and, and in fact, there's a, 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 there was some back and forth between them, Michelini saying that, you know, that he was – he kind of put the, 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 the stake in the ground on it. But then 
there is actually this, I think some falling out of some feelings on, on, on that, on that subject. I'm sure. Surprised. That's going to wrap up our new comic book day picks. Let us know in the